Uh, first, why all the emphasis on Bill Birnbach, who died in 1982? Okay, so he was the ad man of the century, according to advertising age. Well, why not let him comfortably lie in his grave? Because his philosophy deserved to live. I never actually worked closely with Birnbach. I admired his philosophies growing up in the business in the 60s. I was simply blown away by the uh, pattern-breaking work he was doing. I've always referred to him as the Picasso of our industry because he knew the rules and then he broke all the rules. For me, the future as always belongs to the brave. We must be uh, brave enough to explore new territories, to look for combinations of words and images and ideas that have never been seen before in combination. And to do that, I believe, uh, requires some courage. Even more so, how to be brave enough to create new forms and new structures in our industry, to evolve the old ways into structures that are relevant for our times. Uh, as I said to you uh, in our first session, I wish there had been a school like this when I was trying to make the transition from copywriter to creative director. I'd like to touch on six pillars of the Berlin School curriculum, beginning with the importance of leading yourself. My own mantra is, you've got to have a dream. In the words of Bloody Mary from the Broadway show South Pacific, which is currently enjoying a revival in New York, you've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to have a dream come true? Once you find your dream, you need both the passion and persistence to pursue it. If, if you find something that you passionately love to do and uh, that you really enjoy, then you really will never work a day in your life. Nothing great has ever been accomplished without passion. And then persistence to pursue it. It was Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, who used to pass out these placards. He claimed to have written this, uh, but I found out later where he stole it from. Uh, Calvin Coolidge, an American president who isn't remembered for much. But he said this wonderful thing about persistence. And uh, it was headlined, Press On. And it read in part, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Genius will not. Education will not. He said the world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. What are some of the other qualities important to leading yourself? Compassion for people, I believe. If you aspire to lead people, I think you have to like people, care about them, and find ways to show it. But being kind does not mean being weak. Trying to be humble does not mean being timid. And being compassionate does not mean being tolerant of unsatisfactory performance. Why would anybody want to follow you? This is a question that we asked all of our leaders. The ones that came to my mind were, they will want to follow you if they share your vision and your values. People will follow you if they believe that by doing so, they can be part of a winning team. And that the leader sees achievement as a team effort in which every member will be given both responsibility and recognition. People will follow you if they know what's expected. Um, there is such an importance when a person enters a team or enters a group or enters an organization that they know what is expected in this place. Leading the enterprise is the next pillar. And here we followed the advice of a Spanish philosopher, Ortega y Gasset, who said the first act of a society 
is the establishment of a point of view. I believe this is the most important thing for a brand, too, to establish a point of view. And no matter uh, what size your group, um, what activity you're in, I would suggest that you establish a point of view and that everyone in the group know what that point of view is. A good way to start is to write at the top of the page, find some quiet place, uh, beverage of your choice, plenty of it, and write at the top of the page, this I believe. And then write what you actually believe about things. And then in the morning, look at it and see whether anyone could write a counter set of beliefs. Because if they could, then you've actually said something. If it's impossible to write a counter, you know, people should be nice. Okay, that's not really a, a, a point of view. The best way to establish a point of view for an organization is to bring key players into a process and have them uh, participate in answering some very basic questions. And then they will come to own, own the point of view. Those questions, and I, I can name them quickly. Uh, I don't have them as part of this presentation. But um, thinking of your group as if it were a person. Where do I come from? What do I do? What is my field of competence? And surely there are other people in that field. So the third question is, well, what makes me different? And the fourth question is, who am I for? Who are all the stakeholders, internal, external, that I exist for? Next question, what am I like as a person? And that starts to give the personality of the organization. Then next, what do I fight for? Or what do I fight against? And finally, what are my values? And if you can have your key people together for an offsite, answering those questions, you will arrive at a point of view. Leading clients. To lead clients, you, of course, must build trust. And it goes without saying that the more daring and creative your ideas, the more trusting the relationship must be. I don't know how many of you would have been familiar with uh, eight years ago a campaign which was uh, seen around the world for Budweiser called What's Up? <laughs> you, you remember it? OK. Well, so we go down to the brewery. And <laughs> August Bush can't believe that we want to take his premium brand, Budweiser, his baby, and we're going to sell it by saying, what's up? <laughs> but <clears throat> he said, and we were confident that it would be successful. <laughs> he said, if you really have confidence in this, I'll let you try it. This is hard to do sometimes. But the secret, in my experience, is know what the client wants, know what the client needs, and know how to make the client want what the client needs. You had, be, you had better be sure that you know what the client needs. And that comes only from studying the client's business, learning more about the client's business than he or she themselves might know, so that when you go in with an idea that is likely to be rejected, you have the confidence. This is not risky, sir. This is not taking a chance, ma'am. This, this will build your business. And then knowing how to, how to sell that. And part of that is to look at things through the client eyes. The, um, if your client has a background in law, have you had a lawyer look at your presentation? The idea of third eyes can be very helpful. 
we, uh, we were up against uh, Leo Burnett to repitch the uh, worldwide McDonald's account in 1997. And uh, our team had failed on three previous occasions to win it back. We had lost it some years before. And so I said, OK, this time I will go in and lead the team and lead the presentation. And I will personally make the presentation. Once in a while, by the way, a leader has to do that, to step forward and say, OK, I will now show you why I'm the leader and, uh, and, and take on the tough task. Um, I, we studied that client's business. We knew everything about that business. And I wrote, a, uh, I wrote a presentation that had passion, poetry, emotion. And then I studied the background of the CEO of McDonald's. He came out of accounting and law. And uh, I thought to myself, there's probably too much poetry in here. So I had an accountant and a lawyer read the pitch. And they changed it quite a bit. I mean, the structure was the same. The argument was the same. But it was more in the language that the client speaks. And we, obviously, I wouldn't be telling you the story if we hadn't blown them away and won the business. But it's a good tip to see things through the client eyes. Next pillar. In the early days of building our network, the simple mantra for the, all the agency was find a better way. It applied to every person in the network. If you were a secretary, if you were a planner, if you were in the financial uh, section, find a better way so that everyone knew they were not expected to be satisfied with the status quo. They were always looking to challenge the status quo. And we lost some people during that process, and that was good because we attracted some other people. There were people in the organization who were uncomfortable with ambiguity. And they wanted clear instructions. And we were saying, OK, you know what you're doing. Find a better way to do it. This meant we needed to encourage always experimentation. Again, Africa. And you walk into Africa, and you are astonished by the whole ambiance. Uh, everything is African. And uh, he works for a limited number of clients. Each client has a room in the agency where they can come and uh, either meet with their particular uh, team members or not, use the room for themselves. And so uh, I said to Nissan when he first came up with his idea, it's a great idea and I love it, but you know, why Africa? Because he said, what we do is voodoo. And uh, so that's, <laughs> that's their culture. It's voodoo. Don't ask. Uh, he, is, he is a giant. The last pillar of the Berlin School is leading the industry. On this point, I would simply say that if you aspire to lead the industry, you must establish credibility. Bill Birnbach led a creative revolution, not by what he said, but by what he did. Because his work was so surprising, so admired, so envied, and eventually so imitated, Bill could then speak out, not only about his creative philosophy, but on subjects like taste and ethics and social responsibility. And we've tried to carry on that tradition. If you would lead the industry, you must join in with other leaders through membership in industry associations. And together with like-minded members of the industry, you may be able to change the game and change the game for the better. We are right now trying even new models for how to take advertising agencies to the next level and do more than just communications. And we believe that we can do that because we have earned some credibility in our basic business. Then we also think we have a responsibility to lead the industry in the ways Bill said. All of us who professionally use the mass media are the shapers of society. We can vulgarize that society. We can brutalize it. Or we can help lift it onto a higher level. The second from Lao Tzu, 500 BC, who said, of the best of leaders, when the task is accomplished, the leader will be largely invisible. 
because the people will remark, we have done it ourselves. So I have no doubt that our Berlin School of Creative Leadership will turn out leaders of outstanding quality, measuring up to the highest standards of King Solomon, Lao Tzu, and Bill Burnback, and even more important, fulfilling the highest expectation of the most important leader of all, the leader each of you will become. Thank you.